wings. Please welcome Henry to the North Bay Python stage. Cool. All right, thanks for coming. I know, sorry to pull you away from your lunch, and thanks to the organizers as well for having me over here. It's really cool to um, get up and talk for a few minutes about something you find interesting. Um, so, MyPy. Um, it's just going to give you a little introduction on it's like what the tool means and um, best practices on how to use it. And essentially what it is, is a, a tool for enforcing correct static type annotations across your Python project. And uh, for me, that's really good because I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with Python. I'm sorry to say, that's not, probably not a popular thing to say at a Python conference, but it's true. Like I love all the libraries you've got. You can find a library for anything, and so many people have worked on it for years and years and years. Um, but if you're writing a big, large-scale enterprise application, I, you do tend to get a lot of bugs in a dynamically typed language, and uh, that can be a bit of a headache sometimes. So you've got kind of like this, uh, this sort of balancing act between all these libraries that are great, and then you've got this dynamically typed stuff which tends to trip you up occasionally. Um, so before that, I'll get the trivial stuff out of the way. So. I'm a software developer working for Romex Technology uh, in Nottingham, UK. And I've had to just change this slide after a few days in America because uh, some of you get, were getting very confused about Nottingham. And it certainly isn't Notting Hill, the, uh, <laughs> the, the 1999 um, classic starring Julia Roberts and Brad Pitt. Um, different place, guys. It is, of course, home of Robin Hood, Pr Prince of Thieves. And uh, much more importantly, it was the first uh, destination for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's like royal outing. Um, Californian, I, princess. Californian princess. I know you guys are very into the royals. We can, we couldn't care less. But um, <laughs> I, was, I put it in there. For, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, was, I put it in there for you guys. Um, now, Suits is a great TV show, so I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> OK, so Romax, we write uh, analysis software for mechanical engineers to help, better, uh, help make better, better decisions um, when they des design automotive products, like cars and aerospace things. And uh, in, in, in the renewable energy sector, like wind turbines, we, um, we kind of model all the phenom phenomena that goes in and hopefully help make some better decisions. And there's some screenshots from our software. Um, and on the left, you've got a very poorly looking gearbox, which is bending. And hopefully, we can help the, the engineers make some better decisions on why it's bending. Um, and on the right, I, I have no idea what this picture is of. I just got it off our website, and it looked pretty good. So <laughs> I mean, I, I know what that is, but it'll take too long to explain. That's, that, that's what, I, what I meant to say, of course. Um, so I know you've just had lunch. Uh, so I've got your backs, guys. If you just listen for five minutes, the, the quick version will be all you need, and then for the hardcore amongst you, you can then listen to the remaining 10 minutes of it, where it will be a, bit more, a few more details. So um, five minutes listening starts now. Um, so in 3.0, Python 3.0, syntax was added for variable and functional type annotations. Has, has anyone used them? OK, Le less than I thought. OK, so type annotations can be pretty good. Um, they like help help build the flow of what your application is supposed to do. And if you've got like big functions, um, it helps the readability a little bit um, for other engineers that work on the same pro uh, project. So here's a bit of just normal Python code, pretty standard. Um, dot, 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 of course, means I couldn't be bothered to write actually what the function did. <laughs> but you just have to imagine um, that it's doing something correct. And then here is very straightforward. You just put a colon and then the type after variables. Um, you can have instance variables inside a function as well. And the arrow means the function spits out a string or whatever, whatever the function is. Um, and it can be pretty, pretty good. Um, and as part of 3.5, they've massively increased the sort of syntax that you can add to your type annotations. Um, and it's, it's, very, it's a very expressive thing now you can do. Uh, so uh, sarcasm alert, type annotations are great. Um, but are, are they great, really? If you've, if you've got nutters making functions like this that don't 
you know, it's returning a float, but it's returning a dictionary, and the numbers are string. Like, it's only really as good as your software engineers. I appreciate this is a, a rubbish example, but um, you know, the, the subtleties, it's, it's basically down to you to get it right, and we're not perfect people, essentially. And it can actually be more of a, a hindrance sometimes when you've got wrong annotations in your functions, and uh, what was something, something that was supposed to help you is actually doing the opposite. It makes things a bit more murky. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what was, oh, was that the sarcasm thing? Okay, I forgot I put that in there. Um, <laughs> so, enter MyPy, stage, stage direction, enter. Um, a, it's a tool for enforcing correct type annotations across your Python project, which is amazing for me, because I constantly mess things up and get it wrong. So, it's like a little, a little tool watching your back. Uh, it's developed by Guido, uh, so you know it must be good. It's uh, sponsored by Dropbox and used across their um, large Python code base, so it adds a bit of credibility to, to it. Um, and it's uh, a anyone started using TypeScript? Okay, great. So it's kind of analogous to the from the JavaScript to the TypeScript uh, thing. Um, you know, Python to Python with MyPy is a similar kind of transition and. Um, uh, TypeScript applications now have become, are becoming much more robust and easily testable, and um, people are finding a less headache to write and maintain. And I see it as a similar, th similar thing to that. So um, it's still in early development, but that doesn't mean wait till it's uh, you know, f fully, fully done, fully fleshed out. U use it now and use, use what it can give you straight away. So another a very trivial worked example, because um, we're still in the five minutes after lunch uh, phase uh, at this point. So pip install, my pie, obviously. Um, and then here's a, a little test function. Um, and I'm not going to let you read that long enough to work out the mistake. Uh, and then you run my pie, test.py, which is that function there. And then it will tell you there's an error. Your, your type annotations are wrong, or your, your function return is, is wrong. So um, on line three of that test script, uh, there's an incompatible return type. So it expected a float and got a string. And uh, that's pretty cool. So MyPy has like, looked at what that function is on the return, it introspectively worked out that it's supposed to be returning a string, and compared that with the return type that you've annotated float. And it's been like, OK, there's a, there's a problem here. And then that's highlighted it to you, and you can go in and work, it, work out what's, what's gone wrong. So it keeps everything nice and correct. Uh, okay, so go back to sleep now for the people that are still digesting. Um, so to really get the most use out of this, you have to look at what was added in Python 3.5 uh, as per the PEP 484 standard, which is quite a big deal. So before this, the only types you could really have were your own classes and the, the built-in stuff. So here are a few, a few examples. Um, but now there's a new typing module which is, which is shipped as part of the standard library. And uh, for, uh, so here are some of the basic things you can add, like lists, sets, uh, optional things, so optional arguments if it's none or something else, or unions of several types put together, um, any stra, no, no points for working out what that means. Um, from the typing, module import callable iterable, so you've got some interesting functional uh, annotations you can put on stuff, which is, which is very handy as well. Um, so you can still, it still encourages you, encourages you to use all the kind of dynamic -y function bits of Python as well. And then you've got a few more of the weird things at the bottom, like, like any, just obviously, if you don't care, or if you want MyPy to start ignoring a few things, if it's a bit too dynamic, you can say, actually, this is a dynamic part of my code this object or this function spits out any or it is an any thing. Um, so you can still use that. Um, casting, you can like cast, you can force a variable to be something um, which is useful and I'll talk about type checking in a bit. So all those things on the previous slide, you can look up, there's a thing called the MyPy cheat sheet and you can just Google that and it'll tell you about the kind of standard things. Um, but I've, I've used this quite a bit, so I've got three case studies for you where it's not quite as straightforward and uh, it took me a lot of Googling to work out 
uh, how, how to get around these things. So case study one is dictionaries. So the first one is straightforward. So this is a, uh, a variable, variable annotation. So x is a dictionary. It's the, the key values are strings, and the types are floats. And MyPy, if you run MyPy over this, it'll be like, OK, that's cool. Well done. You've, you've got that right. You're a very talented software engineer. Um, and then this isn't going to work because um, the syntax for dictionaries, the type dictionary is all your, all your keys are the same type and all your, and all your um, values are the same type. So at the moment, the typing module doesn't let you annotate dictionaries like this on the right correctly. So MyPy will be like, actually, that's not, that's not quite right there. You're a terrible software engineer. Throw your, throw your laptop in the bin. Um, go home. Uh, but it's OK, because MyPy is, is kind of adding a few more things, um, uh, which will hopefully be brought into the standard library of Python soon. So you can, you can generate your own uh, dictionary types. And this is a very, this is very much a uh, TypeScript type of thing, where you can have a, a few files where you declare the types of your objects. And then here's your dictionary class called person. And then you can now correctly annotate your x. And that will make sense, and MyPy will be very, very happy with that. So um, you can basically make your own. You can make your own types, which are really useful if you've got custom stuff, and um, that's that's pretty good. Um, so circular imports. Uh, this is important for a couple of reasons. So da, da, da. sorry. Okay, so. Uh, Slideshow. Okay, so sometimes your variable annotate, your type annotations will lead to a circular import, um, and you can do this thing, which is if you're type checking, do your imports in there for your offending imports. And uh, this this is a bit of a hack. Um, I agree, this, is, this doesn't look good, but we know it's a hack, and uh, it'll be a hack for two reasons. One, the structure of your program isn't quite right, and it's a good reason to investigate you know, wh wh why you're getting circular imports for types. Um, and the second reason, which I'll, I'll give you a bit more detail about later, is um, that you don't have stub files generated for this thing called class A. And uh, if anyone has used C, C++, you've got header files. Yes, header files. So, so um, stub files are Python's kind of header files. And uh, if any of you have used Python 3.5 plus, if you look in your site packages, you'll have a thing called uh, stub shed or, or type shed, something like that in there. And that'll be all the stub files for the standard library. Um, but things outside of the standard library don't have stub files yet. So you have to, uh, you can generate them yourself or you can download them yourself from third party things. So it's just be aware that you've got every time you install Python 3.5 plus, you've actually got this typey uh, header file thing that's been installed in there under the under the hood. Uh, so no returns. This is a common thing in Python. So every function I believe returns none. I don't think you can actually have a Python function that returns nothing, but sometimes. Your, your design intent is to really write a function that should never be used by anyone, anyone else to return nothing. It should just be a completely static thing. Um, so you can, this one I use quite a lot. So if you've got a completely static function, you can annotate it with a no return type, uh, which is really useful because you don't have people using that function and assigning a none, uh, a none value to a variable. It will, my pie will error, error it essentially. So. Um, that's, I found that pretty useful. And that's the end of the case studies. Um, so finally, uh, who uses things like uh, Jenkins, Travis, GitLab CI, GitHub CI? OK, a few more hands, that's good. So you can add MyPy as a job to your pi pipeline, which really makes it a lot, more, a lot more powerful if you just have this thing running in the background every time you commit or want to merge into master. Um, it's pretty easy in theory. It's just like adding a linter. But you know, if, if anyone, if, if you've ever tried to add linting to your pipeline, um, that if it's a big pre-existing project, you'll, you'll get to this thing where on, on your first run, 
you'll have like 10 million errors or something and you'll feel pretty overwhelmed and uh, you, you might be tempted just to not bother linting your project. Um, so I'll, I've got a few top tips for adding MyPy into your project to help that kind of getting it down to no errors a little bit easier for you. Um, da, 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 okay, cool. So if, if you if you use GitLab CI, which I I love, um, it's just as easy as adding a job to your YAML file like that. You just type MyPy and then your Python project in your script, and and it will be a job in your pipeline. Um, okay, so MyPy module name, which is your module name, of course. Um, the first thing you need to do is ignore the missing imports. And um, I'm going to just pull rank on this one and say do it to start with, um, because uh, as some, sometimes your third party things that don't have the type shed stuff um, will be missing, and they'll be throwing lots of spurious errors for you. Um, so just to start with, ignore the missing imports. Um, and you'll find that you can actually focus on the things that you can fix straight away and will improve your code more easily. Uh, the next thing I'd add, um, once you've cleared up all the errors on the first step, would be to add a strict optional, which checks all your optional parameters. So it'll take a little bit longer to run sometimes. Um, and it'll, it'll just basically percolate through the whole program and see, make sure that you, all your optional arguments and everything are being referenced correctly. And it's just a, a bit more stuff to fix up, usually. Next one, if you've got strict optional good, we can disallow untyped defs, which means um, you know, MyPy doesn't enforce that you have everything annotated. But if you add disallow untyped defs, it means no, every function you add to your project needs to have an annotation, whether it returns none, whether it returns any, whether it returns a specific thing. Um, every function that gets committed to the master branch, that's, that's our policy, needs to be um, annotated. Um, then, if, if you're feeling brave, you can then go a few steps further, which is disallow any. So that means nothing in the whole project is unannotated, um, which uh, I, I haven't done yet because I'm not a masochist. Uh, but um, yeah, if you're feeling super, super intense, then go for that. And I think, oh, finally, yes, ignore the, ignore the missing imports. The final step is, um, so if your third party libraries and your own classes that you're using, you should go back and generate the stub files. And there's a tool called stubgen, which can generate the stubs for you, um, or, or at least get you 90% of the way there without you doing any manual work. Um, so you might see a little bit of research into generating stub files for Python, but it's definitely well worth it, and it'll make your coding a lot better. Um, well, it'll, make, it'll make your project a lot st more stable. Um, and finally, any questions? Does anyone have any questions? I can run a mic over. One question. And we'll make this the only question. Uh, is there any integration with like zope.interface? Sorry, can you? With uh, any integration with zope.interface? Oh, unfortunately, I don't know what that is. Zope.interface? Was it? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It, it, No? Okay. No is the answer to that question, then. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah. So um, I'm going to run up on stage so I can hand you a speaker gift. Everybody, please give Henry a massive round of applause.